Hello, in this presentation I will talk about configuration, work and task spaces in robotics. These are terms that frequently appear in many robotic applications and it is important to differentiate between them, particularly in robot motion planning problems. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to differentiate between these spaces as well as to study several cases with configuration with specific configuration workspaces and task spaces. We will analyze the, topo the topology of uh, each of uh, these uh, spaces and dimensions. Finally, we will introduce the concepts of redundancy and null space. The configuration space of a robot is the space with all possible configurations, that is, the values that joints can take. This space is also known as C space and here we will refer to it with the C letter. The configuration of a robot represents the minimum parameterization that allow us to uniquely define the position and orientation of the robot. Therefore, we will usually use letter Q as the generalized coordinate vector that belongs to C, the C space. Rapid root joints imply a configuration space in S1 and are represented with values between 0 and 2 pi, although some joints may have some physical limits and the range might be smaller. On the other hand, prismatic, prismatic joints imply that they move in a configuration space R1 because they are linear and therefore they can take real values. Uh, as I previously mentioned, the robot configuration space is widely used in motion planning problems, mainly because the robot can be treated as a simple point by the, defined by the generalized coordinate vector Q. On the other hand, the robot workspace is a set of poses, that is, positions and orientations that the end effector can achieve. It is very important to know this workspace since you can only perform movements within it. The problem is that the size and shape depends on the type of joints, the length of the links, the tool use and many other things. And its computation is not that straightforward. Many manufacturers provide simple diagrams that represent the how uh, can the wrist of or the reach of the robot wrist, but they do not consider the orientation or the length of the tool. This is a very specific aspect. This diagram that they provide, the, in most of the cases, it's an indicative of the areas where the robot can work. Obviously, the, pro the program or the robot controller uh, knows exactly uh, if a specific position uh, can be reached with the robot and if it's reachable then it will move the robot to a specific position if it's indicated as. In the case of a robot moving in a 3D space, the working or the workspace, sorry, it's always a subspace of R3S3, while in the case of a coplanar robot, the workspace is just simply a subspace of R2S1. Here uh, I show the workspace of the IRB140 robot from ABB. Uh, the computation of this space is important to know if uh, we want to know uh, if a specific position and orientation of the vector is achievable. We can see two cases, the one without considering the robot's tool and the second one considering the robot's tool. Also I have considered here in this workspace possible collisions with the floor and as you can see, for instance, on the image on the left, uh, behind the robot, there's, uh, the workspace is like cut it because of, uh, of, this, of those configurations um, the, the robot will collide with the floor if it's exactly placed as we can see the figure. Well, and also, as you can see in the image on the right, the workspace shape changes with the tool and this is, has been done specifically with a, uh, a robotic gripper but if we have a different tool, then we will have a different workspace. 
Another different concept is that is the robot task space, which is always a subspace of the workspace. And this defines the set of positions and orientations that the robot must reach, but not the ones that can reach in this, as is in the case of the workspace, but the, the ones that must be reached by the controller. It is important, uh, or an important requirement, is that the dimensions of the configuration space uh, are greater than or equal to the dimensions of the task space. So, in that case, uh, we can accomplish a specific task. We will need to analyze different types of robots and uh, dimensions uh, based on their topology and configuration. Um, in the case of an RRR cloplanar robot, uh, the dimension of the configuration space is 3, just like in this case of the workspace. However, the configuration space is a subspace of S3, while, as I mentioned earlier, the workspace is a subspace of R2S1. The vector of generalized coordinates Q is a vector of three dimensions that it's defined with the values of the three joint angles. This robot can perform two types of tasks, positioning and orientation task. Depending on the task to be performed, the dimension of the task space is 3 or 2, respectively. For example, if we only perform a positioning task having three degrees of freedom robot, that means that we can use or uh, achieve or reach that a specific position with multiple configurations. This is something we will see at the end of the presentation. In the case of a 6 degrees of freedom robot arm, I show the dimensions and topology of uh, the configuration, workspace and task space here. The configuration space is a subspace of X S6, while the workspace is a sub subspace of R3 S3. In this case, the, uh, its general coordinate uh, vector has a six-dimensional vector, or it's a six-dimensional vector with six values corresponding to the angles of each of the joints. Uh, in this robot, uh, we can perform positioning tasks. Uh, in this case, with only uh, it's a task with three dimensions, but also we can perform positioning and just providing a final orientation. In this case, with a four-dimension task. And also, we can perform just simply uh, the general 3D position and orientation task, which implies a six dimensional task. The configuration space of a SCARA robot is a subspace of S3R1. The dimensions of the generalized coordinate vector is 4 in this case, with three angular coordinates and one uh, prismatic coordinate, this is a, a displacement coordinate. With this kind of robot, we can perform tasks of dimensions 3, again, just for positioning components or positioning and orientating the, uh, the, the, uh, the component, which implies a task in this case in the later of 4 dimension. Note that the workspace in this case is R3S1. Here, uh, we show the case of a delta robot with 4 degrees of freedom. The configuration space is a subspace of S4, and therefore the dimensions of the generalized coordinate vector is 4 again. In this case, all of the uh, uh, variables are correspond to angular uh, variables, correspond to the angle of the joints. The workspace is exactly the same as we have seen in the SCAR robot, uh, despite the fact that the configuration space in this case is different. And to finish with this series of these examples, we show the configuration workspace and task space of a Cartesian robot. All of them are subspaces of the R3 uh, space. Its configuration is defined with a vector with just simply three real displacement numbers corresponding to the displacement of each of the axes. And to end this presentation, I would like to introduce some basic concepts uh, associated with the configuration and task space of a robot. If a robot has n degrees of freedom and the dimension of the task, let's say, it's m, then p is n minus m. 
and this represents the amount of redundancy of the robot. And so if p is greater than zero, that will imply that we can achieve the same task with multiple configurations. In that case, we say that the robot is redundant. Another concept very related with this redundancy is the null space of a specific task. This is a space in which it doesn't matter what we provide or what we set the robot, that doesn't change the actual task that we are executing. And this allows, let's say, for instance, in the case of uh, redundant robots, to uh, perform or uh, uh, a specific task while at the same ta time uh, control, uh, let's say, the joints to, let's say, for instance, to uh, be in a more natural configuration, let's say, to avoid joint limits, for instance, or to avoid obstacles. Indeed, in the figure, uh, you, you can see here how, uh, in this case, uh, you can perform different tasks but with multiple configurations because of the redundancy. Well, in this video I have explained uh, frequently and widely used concepts in robotics. Thank you very much.